Many years ago, around 2018 AD, a light shone bright in Shangotedo, and a church was born. The pillars of the church were created by spirit-filled people, inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are one sound. To win souls through spirit-filled songs and ministrations. One media to bring the imagination of the church to life on the big screen. Ushering protocol hospitality and traffic at the front-facing units. They ensure orderliness in and out of service, making members and guests comfortable. Membership team helps new members in one church to know more about us, especially what makes us family. Maturity team helps to continue the process of spiritual growth as you strive to reflect the nature of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. The prayer unit upholds the congregation and the community in prayer. This year, One Church has reached out to even more people to continue to grow as one family through the Life Group program with eight different locations across the city. We are growing smaller to grow bigger. The church has encouraged the growth of both genders by setting up a men's ministry known as King's Men and a women's ministry known as One Woman's Network. But its message isn't just for adults. The junior church and the teen's church ensure that our future is being nurtured the right way God intended. So why would you stick around one church? Because we care for our family. We want them to grow in all areas of their life with the best kind of foundation there is, the foundation of Christ. We invite you to join our services Sundays 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., both online and on-site. First-timers can pick up a welcome pack at the hospitality stand in exchange for the guest card received during service. Also, join us on Wednesdays 6.30 p.m. online, showing on all our social media platforms. Do come along with a friend. We have a surprise for you. See you soon. Good evening, church. I want to read from the book of Psalm chapter 150, verse 2. It says, Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. I want you to join me as we begin to praise God indeed for his mighty acts, for his excellent greatness in our life, in our community, in the church, in Nigeria at large. It is by his mercies that we have been sustained. I want us to just begin to appreciate God for his mighty act. Father, thank you for your mighty act. Thank you for your wondrous acts. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your lordship over us. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Healer. Thank you, Deliverer. Thank you, Sustainer. Thank you, O oh God, for all you have done, for all you are doing, and for all you will do. Thank you because your promises indeed are yes and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We remember all you have done for us. And Lord, we appreciate you. We are grateful. Liba kosi katata. Ye namu kano lige di gora fushina. Mekimba do si yeti katuda. La tatu tekida. Branako zekiash. Ola kato kani hadu soda piana katayaba. Lord, we thank you for your mighty acts. We ke ni kalo gana jona hata. You are good and your mercy endureth forever. Who is like unto you, O God? Liba kazon anama hataliados. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and everything that even exists. The kindo balin the kia kona duta. We see your faithfulness. We see your awesomeness by your power, O God. We are sustained. We are preserved. We are protected. Mi akano bala kina kura dosha nihada meketo konuga sokala dabadi yobano zokudu. Thank you for praying protecting our lives. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our going out and our coming in. We are grateful. We are grateful. From the depth of our hearts, we appreciate you. We lift up our voices, oh God. You are awesome. You are gracious. You are mighty. You are gr you are wonderful. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your mighty acts, oh God, are so much enumerated in Psalm chapter 136, oh God, where you did wondrous things in righteousness. Thank you. Thank you. Creator of the heavens and the earth, commander in chief of the universe, our healer, blessed be your holy name lord we give you all the glory in jesus name we have given thanks amen
I want us to begin to pray for the grace for speed. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, the word of God say, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his loins. And the word of God say, And he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. It, didn't, it was not recorded that he ran behind Elijah. He did not run beside Elijah. The word of God said he ran before. He ran before. I want us to begin to pray, Lord, the grace for speed. The grace for speed. I don't know how stagnated you have been. I don't know how crawling your, your, your movement has been. I don't know how slow your movement has been. But I want to tell you by the word of God, that grace for speed is available. Let's begin to receive the grace for speed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we receive the grace for speed. We receive the grace for speed. We receive the grace for speed. We receive the grace to overtake. Wherever we've been stagnated in the past, wherever we've been, we are stagnated presently, wherever there is crawling in our life, Lord, by your grace, by your spirit, we receive speed. We receive speed. We receive accelerated speed. In the name of Jesus, we advance forcefully. In the name of Jesus, because of your grace, because of your power upon us, oh God, doors are opened. Limitations are removed. In the name of Jesus, delays are removed. In the name of Jesus, we run fast. We run well. Just as Elijah ran, we run, we run. Your spirit carries us. In the name of Jesus, we receive extraordinary grace, oh God, to overtake. In the name of Jesus, in our families, oh God, we receive grace for speed. In our ministries, Lord, we receive grace for speed. In our businesses, Lord, we receive grace for speed. In our finances, we receive grace for speed. In our children's education, Lord, we receive grace for speed. Is there slow growth, oh God? Is there slow development in the lives, oh God, of our children? We decree grace for speed in the name of Jesus. As Daniel operated in the grace for speed above all the all, other people in the land in the land of Babylon, Lord, we receive grace for speed in this time. We receive grace for speed in this time. Nothing hold us down. Nothing hold us back. Nothing delays us, oh God. We refuse to crawl. In the name of Jesus, every bondage, every power, every stronghold that causes us to crawl, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we break free. We break free. We run in the name of Jesus. We overtake in the name of Jesus. We cover all in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for accelerated speed. Thank you, Lord, for accelerated speed. Thank you for the anointing of speed in our lives. Thank you for the anointing of speed upon everyone in this ministry. Thank you for the anointing of speed upon everyone in our families. Thank you, oh God, because we are testimonies of speed indeed. Glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord, for speed. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our last prayer point is the prayer for divine protection. I want to read from Psalms chapter 79, verse 11. The word of God says, Let the sign of the prisoners come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. The word of God says, preserve thou, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. We are praying, Lord, everyone in our midst that has an appointment with death, we begin to destroy that appointment. We begin to decree that no one will be lost. We begin to decree that no one will be cut short. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you will preserve every one of us. You will preserve the men. You will preserve the women. You will preserve the children. In the name of Jesus, we cancel, we annul every appointment with death. We disannul every appointment with death. We cancel every appointment with death. You will preserve us, O God. Your word has given us these promises that with long life you will satisfy us, O God, and you will show us your salvation. We enjoy long life, O God. We enjoy the gift and the packages of salvation in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we are sustained. We thank you because we are preserved. We thank you because we go out and we come in in your safety. Thank you because we lie down and we wake up in your safety. Thank you, O God. God. Thank you, oh God, because the hand of the devil will not prevail over any one of us. Father, we thank you because we have the mark of your covering. We have the mark of the blood upon us. We are exempted from every evil. We are protected from incident and accident in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because your church is kept. Thank you because your body is preserved. Lord, thank you because there shall be no news of death around us. Thank you because there shall be no news of anyone falling down around us. We are preserved. We are protected. We enjoy divine protection. Protection. We enjoy divine protection. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Whatsoever we desire from you, we receive by faith. We receive by faith. We receive by faith. We receive this life-giving spirit by faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because we are not alone. We give you all the glory. We give you all.
all the glory. We begin to decree, oh God, into the rest of this service that we receive divine understanding of your word. As your word comes forth, oh God, our mind and our heart, oh God, are receptive for your, to your word. In the name of Jesus, every hidden one that's your word, we begin to receive it. In the name of Jesus, thank you for understanding. Thank you for intelligence. Thank you, oh God. Glory, glory, honor you, God. We appreciate you for what you have done, for what you are doing, for your abundant grace over our lives. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, we have prayed. Amen.
Amen, 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 and amen. Praise God. Really good to have you here uh, uh, again for our midweek event here at One Church. Uh, I trust it's been a good week, and of course, like I always pray, uh, that the rest of the week for you will indeed be the rest, uh, the best of the week in Jesus' name. All right, I want to challenge you very quickly, like I always do. Let your friends, let them know that this is happening. So share it, share it to your friends. I encourage share it to your enemies also. They'll become your friends, yeah? Put it on your uh, notifications, broadcast, all of that, and let everybody know to come in here today. Let's have a great time uh, in God's presence. Uh, also, get family and friends together. Everyone around the house, uh, let us be blessed together by God's word uh, this evening. And I, 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 I do hope amen again that it has been a good week for you for anyone who's going through a tough time i'm just praying at this time a prayer of encouragement that god would give to you a supply of his spirit all right and that this situation will indeed turn out for your deliverance in the mighty name of jesus if you believe that please say a big amen i'm here this evening to encourage someone as we uh, come to the end of the year this very interesting year. Uh, Post-COVID, I don't know if that's entirely correct because you still have some of that uh, in play, but I think to a large extent, uh, most people have returned to life or to living. Maybe not as usual because a lot has changed uh, culturally, uh, you know, church culture, work culture. So many things have changed. Uh, things we did not assume to be possible. Uh, for instance, people working uh, you know, a few times at home, a few times a week, which, which actually um, was the norm in, in many other climes. You know, we, we now find that happening here in a place like Lagos, Nigeria also. Um, you know, even church culture, the, the proliferation and the expansion and the explosion of the online church and so many things. And I believe um, uh, that, that many at times we go through crisis uh, so that we can see new sides, amen, to God's plans. Not only that, but new sides to what we can handle. The Bible says there's no temptation that has come upon you that is greater than what you can bear. And I don't know how you have uh, needed to or been able to adjust, you know, through all of this. Uh, in many cases, you know, people were hit economically, but we thank God you are still standing and he has made a way for you through it all. My prayer is that the God who has brought you this far, because he's faithful, he will finish what he has started in you. And I, I want us to uh, uh, be encouraged and reminded, amen, that God has us in mind all the time. And as you go into the new year, it's important that you begin to focus on his plans for you, amen, for that new year. Focus on what he's doing in you, how he's preparing you, amen, for what he has prepared for you. I want to share with us uh, from scripture in the uh, short time that I have uh, to encourage us this evening. If you'd open in your Bibles, it's in Psalm uh, 139. Psalm 139, uh, the Living Bible Translation. I'll read a few passages of scripture there. Psalm 139, I'll read verses 1 to 5, and then I'll read 16 to 18. If you're in here today, please just let me know where you're watching from Amen. Say hi to me. Hi, Pastor T. Amen. Let's just put some life in there in the comment section. God bless you. He says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit or when I stand. When far away, you know my every thought. You chart the path ahead of me. You tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment, you know where I am. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it. You are... Uh, both precede and follow me, and you place your hand of blessing upon my head. I'll go to verse 16. It says, you saw me before I was born and scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. How precious it is, O oh Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn towards me. And when I waken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. Amen. And what David is examining here or reflecting on is the depth of God's love towards us 
and the depth of thought, amen, this is important, that God has invested in us. Look what he says in verse uh, 16. You saw me before I was born. You scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. God knows about your every day. Amen. There is no one day God does not know about. There's no one day he's not conscious of. There's no one day he's not, you know, working to help you through, to encourage you through, to supply his spirit for you through, and to help you come out stronger to, through. He's saying, God may as well have handed you a book when you were born. Every day of your life was recorded in his book. So God knew you. God understood the trajectory of your life, amen, before you started to walk um, um, here on earth. And as you stand on the edge of a new year, um, you know, people begin to experience many uh, emotions, emotions of fear, emotions of uh, anxiety, emotions of, uh, you know, hopelessness, insecurity, emptiness. First, because you're having to reflect on this year, this year that maybe for you was so-so, you know, uh, maybe it took you a while to pick up, maybe it took you a while to get going, maybe it took you a while to begin to see some of the things you had planned to see in January, but, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, you know, COVID policies and what have you uh, stood in the way and your heart is already worrying about um, the new year. But this scripture offers an assurance that God has plans for you and I. I want you to say in the comment section, God has great plans for me. Amen. God has great plans for me. Not just plans, but good plans. Good plans. And I want to show you uh, from the book of uh, Jeremiah also. We see that in uh, verses 16 to 18 we read here but also from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. It says, I alone know the plans that I have for you. Amen. They are plans of good. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. All right. I'm there now. So Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 in the King James, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. They are to give you an expected end. Amen. God says he's thinking towards you. God is already thinking about someone's 2022. If you believe that, say a big amen. God is already thinking about your success in the new year. The question is, are you thinking in line with God? Are you thinking the same thoughts that God is thinking? Are you thinking along the same themes that God is thinking? Do you understand his heart? Amen. For you, do you understand his heart for you as you go into um, the new year? All right. Uh, uh, Paul said in the book of Philippians uh, in chapter one and verse six, being confident of this, that he who started a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He who started a good work in you, amen, he will carry it on to completion. God will finish what God has started. And from this also, I want to draw out a few things that I pray will be an encouragement to you. Number one, God started the work. Amen. God started the work. You did not start the work. Yeah? And in case you started the work, this is a good season to repent and place the work in God's hands. Amen. It's always important as you go into the new year, as you plan, as you pray, as you strategize, that you ensure that it is God who started the work. All right? You ensure it is God who started the work. I'll show you a passage of scripture in Psalm 127. A lot of us know it. Psalm chapter 127. Psalm 127. Amen. Psalm 127. So it's a, it's a good time to ask the question, who started the work? All right. 
who started the work. But God always completes the work that he started. Look at Psalm 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. You will not uh, labor in vain in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, say a big amen. Except the Lord build the house. And this is a lesson for anyone, you know, who did not receive instructions, who refused to listen to God and thought that their own plans were better and stuff like that who ran off, amen, just because uh, the plans were looking good. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman is staying awake, but in vain. So don't rely on your, sweet, on your street smarts. Don't rely on your skill. Don't rely on your knowledge. Don't rely on your academic qualifications except the Lord build the house. Whatever it is that God is laying upon your heart in this season, ensure to take it back to him. Ensure to ask him to take ownership. Ensure to uh, give him the chairman's role. Ask him to direct you. Ask him to lead you in the knowledge that I will be building in vain if God is not involved in this project. And I'm praying that you will see the good hand of the Lord, amen, in what you set out to do, even as you proceed into the new year. And if you are doing anything now that comes across as a struggle, amen, my prayer for you again is that you will see the good hand of God in what you are doing in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, please say a big amen. Verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Amen. You will experience sleep. You will experience the peace of God and the hand of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nudging you tenderly, leading you tenderly into the fullness of God's will for you in Jesus' name. God started the work. Being confident of this is what Paul said. Being confident of this. And your confidence must come from that knowledge that I did not send myself. I did not assign this to myself. Amen. I have a word from God concerning this matter. And that is where your confidence should issue from. The fact that you have a word from God concerning this matter. So have you found a word from God Concerning that matter is another question I have to ask you today. Have you found a word from God? When God gives you an assignment, please go straight into his word and begin to look, amen, for a word that aligns with what God has told you. Because that is the word or those are the words you will need to stand on when troubled times come. Troubled times will come no matter what God said to you. Some people believe that, you know, the fact that they had some challenges, proves that it wasn't God. Oh, I made a mistake. God mustn't have spoken to me, you know, because I thought God spoke to me, but the first person I spoke to said no. So I realized I made a mistake and you are so mistaken. Amen. In fact, many a times the reason why you will face so many challenges is that God spoke to you. If you go in your Bibles, it should be Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. All right. As soon as the word was sown, the Bible says, persecution arose because of the word, amen, that was in him. Because it's for that very reason. It's not for you, amen. You're not, you're not handsome enough for the devil to bother about. You're not beautiful enough for the devil to bother about. You are not more qualified academically than he is, amen. But when there is a word in you, when God has put an assignment when God has put a, a blessing with your name on it in your heart. The devil is going to throw the kitchen sink at you. Everything that he's got in his arsenal, amen, and put every challenge in your way in the physical realm. He will throw storms. He will throw waves and winds. It is your job to keep standing on that word, amen, that God gave to you. God who started the work is my confidence. I did not start it myself. God started the work is my confidence. I did not start it myself. 
Paul then goes further to say that not, not only did God start the work, God is also taking responsibility for completing the work. Isn't that a blessing to someone? Isn't that a, a relief <laughs> to someone? You see, because some people believe God starts it, but then he leaves it in your hands. And so someone is worrying right now, how am I going to finish this thing that God started? Imagine the audacity. <laughs> Imagine the ignorance. <laughs> if God started it, you really think you can sustain it? If God started it, you really think you can finish it? Paul said, my confidence is this. My peace is this. I'm so blessed in the knowledge that God started it. Why? If God starts it, God has taken responsibility, amen, to finish it. Paul said, which army sends its soldiers to war without taking care of them? Have you ever seen such an army? It sends the soldiers to war and says, by the way, you're going to buy your own uniform and buy, I mean, I, I hear it happens, but you know, it shouldn't happen. Yeah. Or the police force, you're going to buy your own boots. You're going to be responsible for your own uniform. Yeah. You're going to be responsible for this and for that. No, if his assignment is to go to war, he should not be distracted by any other thing. And so the nation or the sending authority then takes charge of everything else. God who has started the work, he is taking responsibility for finishing the work. Perhaps you've seen some of these buttons that read PBPGIF. W M Y, Amen. I look for I look for one of those uh, uh, online and ask them to put it on the screen. P B P G I F W <laughs> M Y. I don't know if anybody has seen that before. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but there's a most important truth that I see in that. <laughs> Let me tell you what it is. Please be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. <laughs> Somebody say to the comment section, God isn't finished with me yet. Amen. This is a process. I'm on the way to somewhere. What you are seeing is not the finished product. Please be patient. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't conclude with my case. And you had better not conclude with your case also. <laughs> please be patient God isn't done with or finished with me yet and in that you have both good news and bad news somebody say oh pastor what's the good news well the good news is that since God isn't finished with you yet then you have an exciting future to look ahead to since God isn't finished with you yet then you have an exciting 2022 to look ahead to. And I'm praying for everyone that inside of my voice today, even those who will listen later, that the year ahead of you, amen, will be your best yet in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, amen, say a big amen. The bad news, however, is that if God isn't finished with you yet, then God will not allow you to stay as you are as you go into the new year. If you will become all that God intends for you, you will need to change. You will need to stretch. You will need to grow. Amen. You will need to mature. <laughs> you will need to enter into uncharted territory and do things that you haven't done before. If God isn't finished with you yet, it means there are challenges ahead. It means there are storms ahead. It means there is instruction ahead. It means there are tests ahead, but that also means that there are testimonies ahead. If you believe that, say a big amen. Number three, <laughs> God guarantees the outcome of his work in you. So not only does God start the process, not only does God continue the process, God also guarantees the ultimate outcome of the process. He that is started the good work in you 
will carry it on to completion. Yeah? On to completion. Until the day of Christ Jesus. So if God is guaranteeing the outcome, it means that come what may, you will stand tall as you go into the new year. Amen. Come what may, all things will end up working together for you. And so I want to ask a question. What has God started? Question you must ask. Did I start this project myself or did God start it? Number two, what is incomplete? Right now, what is incomplete? What are those things that you're dealing with? What are those projects that are stuck in the middle you need to be able to articulate them as we proceed to the end of this year and go into the new year. You need to be, be able to articulate them. You need to be able to uh, remind God from his word. God, you started these things. Yeah? I'm asking you concerning each and every one of them that you bring them into their own stage and their own face in the name of Jesus. What is unfinished that needs to be finished what is lacking that needs to be made whole, full, what is partial that needs to be made whole, what is less than enough that needs to be far more than adequate, what is broken that needs to be fixed, what is hurt that needs to be healed, what is weak that needs to be made strong, and what is permanent, that sorry, what is temporary that needs to be permanent. God your God has promised. All right? He will do it and he can not lie. And so you are here this evening. You are feeling incomplete. God, you spoke so many wonderful things to me at the start of the year. I was so excited. I was so full of energy. But as time went on, amen, the winds, the waves, and everything else drew on you and drained you. <laughs> I'm calling you to trust again. I'm calling you to remember you didn't start the work. The timeline is not yours. The project schedule is not yours. Leave it in God's hands. Let God finish what he has started. I want to bless you from a scripture, Philippians chapter 4. And then we'll round up Philippians chapter 4. If you're being blessed already, please say a big amen. Philippians and chapter 4. All right. And verse 6. Sorry. Uh, Philippians 4. Yeah, from verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. Why? Because you didn't start it. God started it. <laughs> if God can't take care of his own projects, then, I mean, seriously, what are you going to do about it? Your job is to listen for instructions. Your job is to obey those instructions and watch God do his job. All right. He says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And so another thing, that is consistent when God starts a work, is that you experience peace. Amen. When anxiety comes, the peace of God comes to flood your heart. It comes to keep you in faith and uh, comes to keep you trusting uh, uh, God. He says that peace, it passes all understanding. It keeps your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. And then the Bible gives us a funnel for our thinking. And I want you to employ this as you go into this new season. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, amen, think about true things. Think about honest things. Think about just things. Think about, think about pure things. Think about lovely things. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, these are the things you need to think on. And I want to leave that with you and encourage you from that, amen, that the year ahead of you is a great one, and that in fact, this year is not finished yet. And then the next few weeks before we cross over into the new year, 
you will experience the mighty hand of God in your affairs in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. I say a big God bless you again. And I pray his encouragement, his strength, the supply of the spirit over your heart, over your hand. Amen. You will not fail. You will not falter. You will not break down midway. The devil will not take advantage of you in the area of your health or your finances or any other area. And at the end of the day, God will be glorified as he is even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I hope that has been a blessing to you. Okay. Uh, as we begin to round up, I'm going to just welcome uh, our friends, our guests, those who are here with us for the very first time never been a part of our services. I just want to say a big God bless you. Thank you for coming in today. Uh, please, in the comment section, you should see a link. Uh, on the screen, you should see a QR code. Kindly use any one of them. One shot, let's love on our members who are here with us for the first time today. Please fill out the form that it leads you to. We want to be able to reach out to you to say thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you for coming. and let you know the different ways by which we can be a blessing to you here uh, at one church. We meet like this Sundays, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And on Wednesdays like this, 6.30 p.m. If you just come to YouTube, One Church NG, you'll see us there. Uh, it's the last Wednesday of the month where we have a live on-site event, all right? Uh, and you'll see more details about that uh, in subsequent weeks. God bless you big. Uh, look forward to seeing you again and again. And please, uh, Try to be at the on-site on event. Uh, coming Sunday, we have an on-site experience. You'll be blessed and glad that you did. Uh, and if you can't, you can still watch us online. But if you do, please walk up to me. Uh, let me know that I invited you to church. We have a gift waiting for you. God bless you. We'll now receive of our uh, uh, giving, our offerings, our tithes, our special gifts, can I encourage that you please give cheerfully? God does love a cheerful giver. I pray God's blessings upon the works of your hands and that he will give you more than enough, amen, to be a blessing to others. Thank you uh, to everyone who is a part of this work in giving. We don't take your giving for granted. It indeed goes into many hearts and lives to be a blessing and even to progress the work of ministry here um, at one church. I want to say a big thank you. Uh, on the screen, you have different ways by which we give. Please avail yourself of any one of them while I say a word of prayer. Father, I say a big thank you for uh, the opportunity to give again. We don't take this for granted. For as many as are honoring you today in the giving of the tithe, the giving of the offering, oh God, the giving of the special gift, oh God, of any sort, I ask your blessings, oh Lord, upon the works of their hands that you increase and you prosper them to the end that your name alone be glorified. Lord, I give you thanks. I praise your holy name. I ask, Lord, that you take all the glory. Pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. God bless you. Thank you so, so much. All right. We don't close our services without taking our closing charge. Uh, it's from Proverbs chapter 4. We'll do verses 18 and then 20 to 23. And we'll have that on the screen now. We can do it together. One, two, let's go. It says, my path is as a shining light. It's shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. This week, I pay attention to God's words. I incline my ears onto his sayings. His words don't depart from my eyes. I keep them in my heart. For his words are life to me and health to my body. This week, I guard my heart with all diligence. Because everything I do flows from it. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. And as much as possible, make it to the physical experience. You'll be glad you did. God bless.